in my last video I talked about moving all this organic matter out of my compost bin that had been sitting for a few years to make way for or to make room for a bunch more leaves and other stuff that I have accumulated over the last few weeks. So you can see here I've emptied out two of my compost bins that are the size of pallets. So basically uh, three and a half foot or so by three and a half foot by three and a half foot and this is what it looks like in the back of my garden so the next step with this part is to cover it with actual just dirt and it'll work its way in to the soil it'll become part of the soil the organic matter will benefit the plants it'll also benefit the, the life and the soil from earthworms to the micro orthopods to all the different things that live in the, the soil food web <clears throat> it's, it's incomplete but I need the extra space so let me show you what we're going to do next over here so as you can as you can see here I've got a ton of garbage bags full of leaves there's probably I guess 40 40 bags of leaves here and I, so if I leave them in the bags, they will decompose. Just, that's just nature. But what I want is I want to get them into an actual proper compost bin for lots of reasons. One, I want to mix all of it up and give it oxygen and let it decompose faster. Two, I want to have easier access to it. Three, I just don't want a pile of garbage bags in my yard. Um, so that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on getting all of this material or as much of it as we can into the next bin so here's the bin that i was working on yesterday the other video this bin is full and i slowly just emptied it out and added it to the hugel culture bed in the garden so what we're going to do today is we're going to close the door wire it back up and then we're going to start adding our, uh, our organic matter that we have in the garbage bag this pallet is just about wore out, just about rotted out itself, which is a good thing because it's all, you know, it's all, all biodegradable. This will eventually become material for the fire pit, and I may need to get a longer piece of wire for this. This will all become material for the fire pit, and then the ashes will actually go back into the garden as well. See, when I wire these things up, I always cut the tails off so they're not sticking out, so they don't scratch anybody. There, I got it. Okay, so I did save two five-gallon buckets of the material that came out of the bin. And I'm going to put this in, I'll just kind of mix it in in layers so it gives it a little bit of a boost as far as the um, organisms go that were already in the bin. And the other thing I wanted to briefly mention is we compost all of our brown cardboard. So whether it's toilet paper rolls or paper towel holders, boxes whenever we buy something or get something in the mail pizza boxes we don't really don't like using bleached cardboard because that doesn't compost as well in fact this is a root that was in this actual compost i just you know throw it back in there so all of this cardboard was material that was in this bin that hadn't decomposed it was still in this state i'm just going to throw it back in here it'll continue to decompose and it'll continue to add material into the compost. This is actually a pizza box from Sam's we just got a couple of days ago. Look, there's fire ants in there. <laughs> it goes in. And
that's another thing. Um, the, the, you know, we we raked this lady's yard. I used to rake her yard before we left on our two. We were gone two and a half years on our traveling. It's a lot of the videos on our channel. When we got back, I saw her at the grocery store one day, and she's like, "Oh, I need my leaves raked." So all of this, all of this is from two years. Of that lady not getting anybody to be able to rake her yard and she said that she had a few people that were going to do it they just never showed up to do it so that's just another uh, benchmark of where things are in society at this point in history but if you live around us and you need someone to do some yard work for for you just you can you always reach out to me i mean depending on the scope of the project i might be able to help you out trick that's another little trick to your garden a lot of people are afraid of things like centipedes and millipedes and <laughs> scorpions and spiders but we really like them because whenever I see a spider in my garden or my compost or anywhere in my yard if the spiders really big and fat and healthy same thing with scorpions if they're fat and healthy then I know that their food chain is intact and it's indicative of the health of my my garden or my compost or the stuff I'm trying to do in my yard. It just it's just easier to see a, a single scorpion or a few spiders here and there than it is to try to get a, a good idea of what's going on underneath the soil. But but if you have spiders and scorpions and millipedes and centipedes, be grateful that they're in your garden. Bunch of dirt just went on your foot. That's okay. <laughs> so that's not going to matter in the aggregate if it falls out, because it, it'll all end up in the compost as well. But we have a huge compost area because it's. Really big. That's all compost. Yeah, if you're going to garden, you're going to have to compost. Unless, you, unless you're just rich and, and garden as a hobby. If you're going to be an organic gardener and grow food and want a reliable source of, uh, of a way to improve your soil, you have to compost. If you don't, you're going to deplete your soil and it's going to... Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> so we had a full bin yesterday. We emptied it into the garden. Now we got a full bin of fresh leaves. This stuff can sit here for two or three years and just slowly compost. It will reduce in size and as it reduces in size we'll continue to add material to it. Keep it full 
And then when I'm ready for it in a couple years, whether it goes in the garden, whether it goes in the raised beds, it doesn't matter. Um, if I decide to do thermal compost and need some material, I've got it here in storage. The most important thing is that it's here. It's available to me and it's starting to decompose. I'm going to need more space because I still have a bunch of leaves that I've got to get out of those bags and into compost bins. Now, if you look over here, these compost bins have room in the top of them. Look, there's some bones in here. I wonder who's oh, bones? Fire ants biting me. Um, there's some rocks. What are those rocks at? I don't even, that looks like ashes. <laughs> ashes, but this material, ah, it got my eye. this material's been here for a while as well. It still has a long ways to go to fully break down. There's a cow pie there. Cow Why are you touching it? Cow, there's a cow pie. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll do the same thing that I did with those other two bins. I'll go ahead and open this bin, transfer all this material into the garden and, and down that back side of the garden and I'll fill up this third bin and if I still don't have all the leaves out of those bags I'll go ahead and empty this fourth bin. Now back when we were here in the summer there were some bumblebees nesting in here. I haven't seen them since we've been back but if there's a bumblebee nest in here I'm going to leave it alone until spring so that way the queen can you know ride out the winter and we don't interfere and we'll take care of our bees. But that's it. All right. So there's another day of composting and kind of how I do it. Now again, this is not thermal compost. I'm not trying to thermal compost. All I'm doing is getting the material from out in the world and bringing it into my garden space, storing it in an efficient manner so that way I have access to it as I need it or want to use it. Okay. Ciao.